Hi students, in this screencast video lecture, we are going to look at the topic osmoregulatory protein. This is the last topic of unit 2 and this topic will be usually asked as a 5 mark question or a 10 mark question there in the semester examination. First we look at the definition for osmosis. It is a spontaneous net movement of solvent that is water molecule through a semi permeable membrane into a region of high solute concentration that is salt or sugar present in a high amount. Process takes place in the direction that tends to equalize the solute concentration on both sides of the semi permeable membrane. So, the condition resulted includes hyperosmotic environment with high concentration of salt. This is simply a ocean water or a salt water or a sea water as a hyperosmotic environment. Next one is a hypoosmotic environment with a high concentration of water compared to that of the salt. Very typical example here is a river water. So, this diagram explains what is happening to a cell when it is kept in a hypertonic or hypotonic solution. Isotonic is the one in which the cell will not be rupturing and it will be maintaining its complete shape. Whereas, in the hypertonic environment, the water will be coming out to balance the osmotic potential. Because of that, the cells will be shrinked. Whereas, in hypotonic environment, water moves inside. That results in the bulging of the cells. This experiment can be conducted by using the red blood corpuscle, that is RBC cells. Thus, both this environment, that is hyperosmotic as well as hypoosmotic, imposes a stressful situation there for the cells growing on it. So, in order to evade this, they have evolved certain osmoregulatory protein that play role in the protection against the changes in osmotic potential and maintain the osmotic balance of the cell. So, it refers to diverse biosynthetic enzymes, transporters and channel proteins that are involved in the maintenance of osmotic balance of the cells. Thus, mainly it refers to the protein that helps to cope up with the osmotic stress that will be resulted in the cells when they are growing in the hyperosmotic or hypoosmotic condition. Thus, the osmoregulatory proteins are associated with the maintenance of osmotic balance inside the cells. Microbial membranes are freely permeable to water. Therefore, water inside the cell is essentially needed to maintain equilibrium with the outside of the cell. The pressure placed on the cell wall by the cytoplasmic membrane is referred as a turgor pressure or turgor. So, turgor is opposed by the tension of the cell envelope. The function of the osmoregulatory mechanisms or osmotic stress response is to maintain the turgor within the limit that allows the maintenance of cell viability and cell shape. In the right hand side, you can able to see a genome in which different kinds of transporters have been noted. First, we look at the different kinds of osmoregulatory mechanisms that have been operating there under the hyperosmotic environment. That is, an environment in which high salt is present, in which the cells have been thriving. As the osmolality of the surrounding environment increases, turgor pressure drops and growth will be slows down or it will be completely stopped also. Macromolecular biosynthesis is inhibited and the respiration of the organism will be decreasing. Under such a condition, in order to maintain an osmotic balance and to reduce the osmotic stress, some kind of a osmoregulatory mechanism is essential. The first one to come into effect is the movement of water that is effected through diffusion process. The water could be moving through other process also, including a direct movement through the phospholipid bilayer with the help of aquaporin, that is water selective channels, and then certain integral membrane proteins which also perform the other functions. Say for example, certain transporters and channel that are designated to translocate substrate other than water. Under this particular stressful condition, they will be involved in the osmoregulatory mechanism. First, we look at the points related to aquaporins. It refers to water specific channel that accelerate the transmembrane water fluxes. Mostly, they are involved in controlling water movement in the eukaryotic cells. Their role in bacteria is unclear since even the absence of aquaporin 
high intrinsic water permeability is observed there in the bacterial membrane. This may be attributed to the high surface area to volume ratio of the bacterial cells. A more rapid movement of water is facilitated by water selective channels called as aquaporins that have been embedded there in the cell membrane. The aquaporin protein is analogous to the proteins of MIP family that is major intrinsic protein family. The aquaporin channel in the E. coli is referred as a AQPZ channel. It has been shown to mediate rapid and large water fluxes in both direction in response to sudden osmotic upshifts and downshifts. The characteristic features of the aquaporin are shown here. They are selective for water and other small uncharged molecules. Water flux towards a low water potential will be achieved. They are independent of the gradient chemical potential existing there. They work in a low activation energy and they commonly exhibit linear kinetics in their action. The next one to balance the osmotic shock is the potassium transporters. The most rapid response to the osmotic upshock is an increase in potassium ion influx through at least three different types of uptake system that includes TRK, KDP and KUP system that have been identified in E. coli, Salmonella and other groups of bacteria. The next one is the role played by the osmoprotectants. What is meant by osmoprotectant? They are all certain organic compounds which are called as osmolites or compatible solutes when present within a cell or externally may play a role in maintaining cell volume, fluid balance and can able to stimulate the bacterial growth rates under an hyper osmotic conditions. Example for osmoprotectants are trimethylamine oxide, trehalose, betaine and glycine betaine. Osmoprotectants can enter into the bacteria by primary and secondary transport systems using proton sodium or ATP as energy sources. Multiple transporter family of proteins including MFS, ABC and BCCT. These are all belonging to the betaine choline carnitine transporter family of protein. They operate in the organisms such as E. coli, Halomonas elongata, Bacillus subtilis, Corynebacterium glutamicum and Listeria monocytogens and they play a role in the accumulation of glycine betaine, proline betaine, ectoine and other compounds that are commonly referred as osmoprotectants. Many microbes also synthesize and accumulate the disaccharide trehalose which is composed of two glucose residues as a compatible solute in response to osmotic stress. They are also accumulated under starvation, thermal stress and desiccation stress conditions. For its accumulation, it need to be first synthesized by using the OTS-AB operon, wherein OTS-A stands for trehalose 6-phosphate synthetase or synthase enzyme and the OTS-B is a trehalose 6-phosphate phosphatase enzyme. Both these are involved in the synthesis of trehalose, which is further get accumulated there in the cells as a osmoprotector. In E. coli and Salmonella entrica, osmoprotectants can also be taken inside the cell by two osmotically regulated permeases systems including PROP and PROU. The following table shows the different types of transport proteins and their mechanism of transport and their respective osmoregulatory role played in the particular organism. Next, we look at the points opposite to that of the previous condition that is an hypoosmotic environment that is the environment in which high amount of water and less salt has been present. Thus in a hypoosmotic environment there is a decrease in osmolality was observed that results in a rapid flux of water into the cell in turn increasing the cell turgor. This results in stretching the cell envelope and that may lead to cracks in the cell membrane or may stretch existing pores or activate stretch activated channels inside the cells. Consequently, permeability of the membrane will be increased but only in a temporary way. This leads to downshifts in osmolality that can be achieved by some special channels called as a mechanosensitive channels that play role in extrusion of water, osmolites, ions 
and sometimes even the amino acids, nucleotides and other solutes from cytoplasm to cell external. One of the important mechanism that operates under the hypoosmotic condition is activation of mechanosensitive channels. So when water starts moving inside the cell, its turgor pressure could rise to 11 atmosphere. This results in threatening the integrity of the cell. It has been proposed that a catastrophic damage to the cell membrane could be avoided when certain mechanosensitive channels are activated in the cells. It includes the MSCL and MSCS channels. So they are the channels present in the cytoplasmic membrane and get activated in response to increase in the cell turgor pressure thereby increasing the pore size there. They help in efflux of water and certain solute and this channel seems to have a low ion selectivity but high conductance potential. MSCL is a homohexamer protein which is composed of 136 amino acids largely of a alpha helical protein. It crosses the cytoplasmic membrane twice with a small periplasmic loop that is in turn composed of 50 to 69 amino acid residues. In the cytoplasmic N and C terminal regions, approximately amino acid residues of 1 to 15 and 11 to 136 have been present. In contrast to acoporin, mechanosensitive channels will permit inward as well as outward movement of the ions. Transient opening of these channels allows potassium, glutamate and other compatible solutes and ATP to exit out. At the same time, sodium and potassium enter inside the cells. This process results in lowering of the intracellular compatible solute concentration which in turn decreases the turgor. So, under a hypoosmotic condition, an important osmoregulatory mechanism is the activation of these channels in many types of bacteria. So, it play an important role in the osmoregulation. They open when cell turgor pressure is just below the level at which it can able to inflict a fatal disruption to the cell activities. Finally, a few terms which could be asked there in a two-mark question. Permeome and permeomics. Regarding this thing, we have already seen in the very beginning classes also. The term permeome refers to total complement of proteins that have been involved in the membrane permeability. That is transport mechanism in an organism. So the total proteins that have been involved in the transport mechanisms are referred collectively by the term permeome. Permeomics refers to a area of genomics in which total complement of proteins involved in the membrane permeability of an organism will be extensively studied.